So you a Muslim now? <laughs> Sean King Sean King is converted to Islam. Uh there's a lot of things going on in politics. So you know I had to get the good Dr. Randy Short on here. It's been a while. So in, in a minute, Dr. Short is going to come on when he's ready. He's uh, doing a few little things behind scenes. And in the short, short minute, Dr. Short will be here to join us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And why is my camera like, is it, is it, y'all, is it just me, YouTube, or does my camera look like, am I moving funny? Do I look like a 1970s music video, the way I'm moving? What's going on? Uh, hope, we'll see. Either way it goes, y'all good. Y'all don't tune in here to see my face. You tune in here to listen to the information. So, we here with... So, uh, yes, yeah, I don't know if you know who Sean King is, but Sean King, you know, Black Lives Matter. Uh, what was that? He had the, the black... the uh, He tried to re restart the, the, that newspaper that never came about. Well, that he renamed after Frederick Douglass's paper. Was it wasn't the Black Star or something like that? Um, he tried. That didn't happen. Um, for the most part, part he's gotten uh, accused of uh, grifting off the community. But you know, at the same time, like anybody else, he's done a lot of great things too, bringing attention to a lot of stuff. And me, y'all know my point of view on, on on these things. I see, I see, I see both sides of everything. You know, so it's, it's going to be hard for me to get a hard line on all the way one, uh, seeing one side. I see the positive and the negative for people, you know. But we did see the Black Lives Matter hustle, you know what I mean? You know, and then, you know, the whole claiming black, that's all been something up in the air. Like, is he black or is he just whack? You know, that's just been something that has been a discussion. And some people, like, go around saying that we wrong for... Uh, for questioning his blackness. Yes, the hell we should. And let me tell you something, black folks. We should never feel guilty about questioning how black somebody is. Why? Because warfare and the, the, the condition and the state that we're in, uh, who a person is does matter. Because not that if, not saying that non-black people can't help us or non-black people aren't good. But at the same time, if you're not willing to be to stand in honesty about who you are, how can I trust you for anything else? To me, the minimum requirement is standing up for yourself and knowing who you are. You know what I mean? And being honest about who you are. And let me decide if I want to work with you or not. Sean King has been somebody that, you know, has going around and, you know, paraded as something that he's not. So these are all things that go into people's minds when it's like, okay, what's this move now? Y'all y'all know the whole Tupac line. So you a Muslim now. And we know that you say that because, you know, it's like every time somebody go to prison, every time somebody go uh, get, you know, you ever know if people become hella Christian or hella Muslim after they go to jail and come back out. And so these are questions that we have. Uh, we're going to bring Dr. Short in a little bit, but in the meantime, what, this is what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to go, because I, I have a lot of stuff going on, which, you know. So I need y'all to go to dewanb.com. Go there right now. And donate to the crowdfunding for my uh, Black American Music Family Tree Project. And also, my documentary is Bigger Than Hip Hop, The Black American Music Family Tree. Um, donate to that right now. You know, we got our hoodies. And I got my, I got, I got the, uh, the hoodies up in the shop, the T-shirts, all the good stuff. We have edition number two of The Black Tree. I extended it a little longer because edition two of The Black American Music Family Tree isn't quite ready yet. So I still have the first edition up, but I will be having the second edition coming up pretty soon. I got my um, courses, you know, the uh, the 100 years of recorded Black American music history course. Eight classes. Uh, we are going to have the open house tomorrow, the opening house listening party on Mixcloud. So I need y'all to stay around and, and uh, go and subscribe to the Mixcloud. 
So you can be part of the open house uh, listening party for the music history course that we're doing right now. Um, so that's that that's that's what that's what I have going on right now. Thank y'all, thank y'all for listening. Dr. Short, are you ready? Oh yes, sir. Even though they've got my computers all jammed up here. Are you ready? I don't, all right, cool. That's okay. We'll we'll go for it. We'll go for and, it. And um, welcome everybody to the uh here back to the platform, our favorite guest, uh Dr. Randy Short. He's gonna break down Sean King and then other things going on in uh, politics today. But uh welcome, Dr. Short. Yeah, you know, maybe not break down Sean King, but basically say this. Uh, there was a an epidemic of people, white, uh, passing as black or doing whatever. I mean, and, and they were making all kinds of books. There was a book called Black Like Me. There was a book called Black Girl. They're all, you know, so there have been a lot of people cosplaying black or Negro or colored for years and then grifting off of it, getting paid, getting going places. There was a bisexual, yeah, I got to say this, a bisexual French dude passing himself off as black, running with the Black Panthers named Jean Genet. And he was just right and probably helped the FBI jack up the Panthers. And everybody thought he's a light skinned person and everybody thought he was so cool. And, you know, he's saying he's black. And I'm gonna just say to you, Sean King, and I don't give two dams who disagrees with me, is a representation of how jacked up the black American community is just that anyone can come and move amongst us, get up without anyone even knowing who the hell someone is and rational, intelligent, credible people can uh, say, hey, look, there's a problem, right? And be ignored because you know why I'm gonna tell you, anybody running, defending Sean King is a self-hating nigger that worships him because he's light skinned. Because if that were a dark skinned Nigerian who was grifting and got busted, people would be tripping. They really would. Um, but uh, there's so much black self-hatred among even people who consider themselves savvy and intelligent and so forth until uh, they liked the idea of white people wanting to be black or at least wanting to pretend to be black. Uh, that kind of makes them feel good about black, which they really don't like. I don't need anybody to ape, to dance like, sing like. That does, I mean, if someone does it, fine. You can go to Italy and sing opera. I, I think I'm related to one of the first opera singers, right? Black Patty. But it's it's one thing or the other, right? But the you've got to really 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 earn your bones to be a opera star and go and sing in italian you get what you can't just go in and say i'm this person you have to prove it these folks just move in and get stuff off of black people's self-hatred and stupidity as well as white worship question do you think sometimes that maybe people can have? Because I know, and this, I, I, I like I'm with you on a lot of the, a lot of the self hatred, a lot of that's in our community. But sometimes people like Ashawn King may have had a particular impact because you don't get to where he got unless you help some people, you know. Because uh, you take a little bit of help for a bigger thing. No. Do you think it could be something to where people? can see the sliver of thing that he does good and be like, hey, you know, that's that's what I like about him. Do you think that's you know, part of it? You're in California. Jim Jones fed and housed people. I, I can't have um, a mediocre standard about our survival, okay? So that's one of the things that's killing us. And I'm going to tell you, there are going to be a lot of people that are going to die because they now put uh, fentanyl on weed and other things the people well i got to do what i got to do whenever i got to do it i'm not saying talk to you the one there are a lot of people in our community that, that think you don't have to check or vet things 
you can just go with it and there's no consequence. I'm thinking about a friend of a friend who died because they hit a little blunt. I mean, it's not the end of the world. And it had fentanyl and they're dead. But you see, you actually know what that is. You, <laughs> I mean, this. I mean, if you're going to do it, know what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? I think it's, I, I don't have to know, fuck it then, right? Mm -hmm. And and the outcome's going to be good, right? And and you see this across the board, where you eat, what you put in your body, who you lay down with, where you go to worship. Nothing has any kind of core standard or foundation. It's just, just everything needs to be loose. And that's why Biden can go to a black family, fried chicken one week, chicken nuggets the next week. And there are a lot of people that say, man, he's trying to relate. He wouldn't take gefilte fish to a Jewish family. He wouldn't take lo mein to a Chinese family. He wouldn't take grape leaves to a Lebanese or Palestinian family with folks dying in Gaza. And so our inferiority complex, which is universal for black Americans, allows Sean King to exist. You know, they have hidden papers on a man named Do Dr. Moens. He was a man from Holland. I think I mentioned to you before. And he claimed that he could prove that black and white people were basically the same, right? And therefore, everybody thought he was a friend of black people. Turned out this man in the court document I read over 20 years ago had had oral sex with, with 5,000 underage black girls. And that's what was in the document. That's the number he put out. God damn. And but all these people, he's white. He likes us. We hate our guts. We want to slash our own throats because we hate God. We hate how we look. And so someone white and all this world of black misery, somebody white likes us. And I just feel so good about that. I've seen other instances. I remember like there's a black basketball player where the white woman was sucking all the little black guys dicks. Yeah, I think you've heard about this, right? Maybe you've been busy. And there are folks criticizing him, man. She did it three times. It don't matter. You, the third time, it was on you, right? She's still a pedophile. There's a teacher on trial right now who's pregnant, who screwed like 31 kids. But you know what? I bet you if some of those kids were black, there's a self-hating piece of scum in our community that's going to feel like they were cheated that that white lady didn't molest them. That's how sick we are. And I don't care who doesn't like. You're a sick fuck if you went for this. The same way people died. Nobody's really been restituted in California for Jim Jones. They're not restituted for a range of things that have happened to our community. Because anybody can come in and say something. Um, look, uh, John Brown a great white man who st stood up at Harper's Ferry, never said to Frederick Douglass, you know I'm really black. What he said is slavery is wrong. I hate injustice against black people. I hate injustice against anyone. Sean King could have walked up and says, look, I'm a white man that feels for black people, right? And I hate the way I know how my family is. And he would have had he would have had even more money. There are white folks traveling the land, speaking as anti, making more bank than Sean King, and just saying I'm white and I hate it. That would have been good enough. There is a delight when a person's a con artist and getting over on the other people. There is a thrill that a grifter, that a scammer has of deceiving people a drag queen has to deceive a person. It is the same damn thing that he has done. Anybody that defends him is a fucking whack job. Question. And, in, and in particular, with all these illegals and other people in the country, we're going to be overrun by people who are going to pick up the worst traits of what they think black is. They're going to rape, abuse, scam, and hurt us and maybe a good number of us got to get killed and die. And I'm like, God hates the day because I'm sick of people hating being black. So it's do disgusting. Think, do you think some people are just cool with, because I know, you know, as people, 
you know, he's doing that Muslim thing now. Maybe some people just happy that he's about to. To me, I don't care either way it go. I, I didn't say a thing I, about this. No, let me finish. Let me finish. I'm letting you talk. Let me finish. Um, the way I look at it is, like, damn, Mashawn King. I always called him Talcum X. He look like Martin Luther King. You know, he 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 sits around. You know, he's like the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. He's he's uh he's 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 one of those guys that he's dangerous because of how he gets down. I just personally. When I saw him convert to Islam, and then he did it on Ramadan, I was saying this motherfucker must be serious if he's gonna do it during a month you can't eat and drink during a goddamn day. If you, it, but that he, so on one hand, is it serious or do you think it's performative? Because initially when I saw it, my my gut instinct is all right. He could be Muslim, you know, and if he and if he's gonna do it and take it serious, I'm never gonna get, diss anybody. For whatever religion they do, if they as long as they take it serious, but this shit look hella performative to me. This motherfucker came dressed like Yasser Arafat in that goddamn scarf, talking about some. I'm about to start on Ramadan. I'm looking at him like, nigga, is you playing or are you playing? What's what, what? What do you think that him the whole Muslim thing is him just playing with folks? Um, I I I didn't even deal with the Islam. My issue is Sean King for years represented himself as a Christian minister. Oh, he did. Okay. Uh, no, he has a church. He does. I mean, and see, so I hear people I talking about their relationship with God. While you're stealing from people and deceiving people, all this lies, and your pastor, your wife's black. Hold on, he had a church. Of, yes, he has a church. Hold on. I, what? I, I mean, Look, Jim Jones had a church too. And so to me, a lot of black Americans have a death wish. I wish they just go ahead and kill themselves. So those of us that want to stand up can find each other. A lot of black folks are just cadavers in the way. And proof of that is how they run after Talcum X or as I'm calling him, Vanilla Vice. He should form a rap group. You could be his drummer. <laughs> I could be a drummer. And the movie week would be would be Moosey's in the Hood. Uh, oh wow, I'm looking. It's called. I'm looking right now. It's called the Courageous Church. He's not courageous enough to say he's white. <laughs> so, oh shit, he really had a church. Yes, come on. I was right now years old when I found out he was a former pet. Oh, now the grift really makes sense. Okay. It's a grift. It's a goddamn grift. I don't care about him grifting in another faith, but you stole from people. People loved you. People trusted you. People argued for you. Now that you're caught, now you're going to go, because he knows something about Islam. There's colorism in Islam. And he'll get a lot further. He'll get forgiven, and and their whole oh, life. Yeah, he, he basically a he basically a white boy in Islam, so he gets pushed to the top of the ranks. He's, he's it it'll be it'll be a shorter line to enslave us. I'm looking I'm looking on the relevant magazine.com. I'm looking on their website right now. And this is for those of you watching who found out. At the same time, I found out that I did not excuse my ignorance chat room, but I didn't know that dude. Like, I wasn't had a church before. I didn't know that, and he had a church that King worked as a pastor at Total Grace Christian Church in DeKalb County, Georgia, before launching Courageous Church in Atlanta in mm -hmm. 2008. During his four years as pastor, he made use of social media to bring in new members, earning him the nickname. The Facebook pastor King also became uh, began to use social media to raise awareness for social justice issues. In 2012, King resigned from Courageous Church, uh, citing personal stress and delusionment. So, huh. disillusionment. But I mean, he's the one doing all the lying. <laughs> he's disillusioned. Oh I my might have God. to do a whole nother follow-up on this. Mm -mm 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 What's going on with this nigga? Mm -mm 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 
Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm intrigued now. No. I just, I, see, I didn't really uh, discover Sean King until um, like during the George, like during like the Trayvon Martin when he was starting to, when the Black Lives Matter thing started to take off. That's when I found out who he was, and I remember he. I, I don't know if he was on Huffington Post or one of those. He was on one of those websites, and I just remember him always drumming up. And I was like, okay, this dude, you know, his haircut low. I don't know if he's black or not. You know, he got, you know, I see he got a he he probably got a black have to barber. be black. Just be sincere. That's my, but, but that's my, the issue is this. If you ain't black, don't try to play black. I mean, you ain't got to be the same race as me for me to be cool with you. Just be who the hell, like you said, be sincere, be who you are. This is new information to me. I didn't know all that, goddamn it. Shit. And for someone to say to me, oh, well, that's between them and God. You are lying and deceiving people and getting money. And if all of this lying and you're a religious leader, huh? And I, I'm a, a bad person. If I find it hypocritical that you go from leading in the church to basically you repudiate since I don't believe in any of this stuff I was saying to people. Well, what does he believe? I get it. On one hand, I get it. People can grow and evolve religion. Ten, in 2012, I was in church. I was still in church. 2024, it, it'll take an uh, act of, it, it took my parents getting something extra special for me to put my foot in the church for the first time in over a decade. And it'll take a whole lot to tend me back. So I get the whole, you go through evolutions and stuff like I, that. I get it the too. I don't, I like don't get is the not no matter what your religion is not apologizing for the grips that's the part i don't i don't get with when it comes to him you, you you need to repent even if he were going i don't care if he becomes a muslim that's between him and the gates of hell or heaven if he makes it the thing is is that you literally treat a religion like it's changing a pair of shoes or a, a suppository or a tampon or a condom the same way you do with an ethnic identity. I'm white one minute, I'm black the next minute, now I'm a Muslim. Well, I see myself as a non-racial universal, but it's, it's a grift. Okay, and he don't be surprised if you come in and the reason that the people want him over in that community is they, they're losing following among black americans so they're gonna take him in have i seen this i saw ben oh, chase actually look i'm not even mad at that strategy because black americans know sean king ain't shit so that's a losing ass strategy it ain't gonna work so <laughs> go yeah, ahead well, you, you had your time in that strategy you want to follow had, sean king to islam okay yeah they they had ben chavis remember ben chavis was in islam and I, I don't know if he's still in it. No, he's out because he was Chavis if Muhammad. We didn't follow Muhammad Ali to Islam. We ain't following no goddamn Sean King. Uh, no, some people would probably follow Muhammad Ali. At least I said, the few did. I said if, if he couldn't get more over Sean, Sean King ain't gonna get it. Yeah, well, no, he's not. But to me, and so you know, you quit because you're disillusioned. But to me. Uh, okay, fine. You can be disillusioned. I can't tell them what state of mind, but there, there are laws. And so when you misrepresent and you steal from people, you lie, you cheat, you steal, you got an issue. And you should that you should do more penance than that. Uh, swapping out, changing horses. <laughs> He's like the congressman uh, from New York, Santos. And just as it suits him, it switches. I'm not saying he can't do it, but uh, it is insulting that you certain people will use, hide behind, uh, one, not religion. They hide behind the phoniness of, uh, of, of Black American people, that we forgive all kinds of craziness, like people are doing everything they can to ignore the atrocities of 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 puff daddy right yeah. i mean r kelly ain't done half 
one percent of Diddy, right? And there are a lot. I mean, there are a lot of people getting in trouble because you know, people, gonna, you know who else will get in trouble this year, Doctor Short? It's coming real soon. Mm -hmm. It's the next year, Jay Z. Oh, praise and, God! And oh, possibly, oh, hold on, hold on. I got my tambourine. <laughs> oh my God! Now that will make me go one to of the church. Biggest degenerates. Go if Jay Z goes to jail, I'm going to church. That will get me to go to church. I may, I may fall out. I'll do the holy dance. If, if Diddy and them get arrested, I will go to church. So, what do you think about? Talk to us about Jay Z. You know, it's very simple for me and Jay Z. He would be dead in the streets a long time ago if people didn't take him in and say, "You've got potential. We want to see you get somewhere." Somebody they did the same thing for Kanye in Chicago. People who are probably dead or down in their luck, but they showed him community love, which we do have. And that's my critique of Sean King. You got community love and you screwed us when you didn't have to. Okay. Um, Jay-Z got love and, and then Jay-Z has screwed everybody to advance himself. It's all about him. Uh, he, he, he and Diddy are basically like COVID and AIDS put together. And and that's what they've done to the music. That's what they've done. They've, they're like Agent Orange, AIDS, PCBs, and all this stuff mixed together. They don't, um, <laughs> you know, they're like, they're even, they're like billionaire Bobby Womax. Ah. And, and, and at least Bobby ah. Womack cre created something, you know, Sam Cook, I, you know, I love Sam Cook and Bobby Womack. I mean, let the little boy drown. Was was wearing the man's drawers when the boys, when the boy's father is, when the baby's drowning in the pool, screwing the man's wife, screwing his daughter, drugs. I mean, beating folk. But Bobby Womack could at least create something that's memorable. I don't believe that Jay Z or Diddy will create anything that will last. And if anything, they've stymied and hindered and destroyed lots of creative, great people, generations they've destroyed. And so I I want to see their not only did they steal did they steal the generations of music, but they also actively, actively, actively pursued other artists and destroyed their careers. So they would destroyed have their careers. No, no, let me take somebody. Because I'm very harsh on rap, but you know, take someone I, I like from rap. I don't care what anyone says, folks are going to just, I love Queen Latifah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, I, I love Queen Latifah. I even liked when she played Bessie Smith. I even liked the way Teddy's looked when she did the close up. I mean, it was, I'm sorry. <laughs> she, looked like, she looked like deflated sandbags, but go ahead. No, 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 but, but those things were firm. I mean, she didn't have saggy breasts. They they look like they could hang. You know, you could play ping pong. <laughs> they hit back. Anyway, teaser. But but if you look at her, if you look at, at at Queen Latifah, they've done music. They've done all of it, and it doesn't seem like she's had to destroy anybody to make it. It seems like she's found her own niche and did not hurt anybody if anything she seems like the type that can roll and get along with people and handle their business we used to have black artists like that that could could it wasn't about having folks fight and drug and gang rape and beat and just you you create maybe you go on the film maybe you go on the television maybe you do but you go on the radio but you create and you 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 establish your canon, your legacy. You can say whatever you want. I don't care who doesn't like this. If Queen Latifah died tomorrow, people could look at the progression of her career, and you could see that each time she made different steps as she grew as an artist, as a performer, as an entertainer. Mm -hmm. And there's not a whole lot of scandal and stuff. If it is, they've worked very hard to keep their private private, mm -hmm. whether you like her or not. 
You get what I'm saying? There are a range of artists who've been able to create, to bring stuff, and they didn't bring the community down. These guys are nihilist. They destroy the music. They destroy hope. They destroy everything that they touch. And they need to be stopped. And the sad thing is so many people look at them, look at their material success, and they ignore all the other stuff. Look, I think I told you, what's his name? Frank Lucas is a distant cousin of mine. They had a lot of money, but they destroyed a large number of people in Harlem selling that dope. You understand what I'm saying? That they destroyed people. And yeah, they had a big car and a chinchilla coat. And a, but how many shouldn't life, shouldn't creativity in and of itself have some esteem? I'm not saying the artists don't make money. Everybody needs a bag. And if you're good, you deserve as big a bag as you should have. But don't destroy. Don't make all this stuff that I've seen, this slut culture, this ratchet culture, this homo thug culture, everything that's not who we are has been brought to the forefront by these, these guys. I mean, and, and people that were truly great, Tupac, dead. A lot of these people dead early, way too early. Yeah, and, it, is, it just seems, you know, like that, that it, it's just, you know, I see the writing on the wall with that. And also the writing on, on the wall, not so much in morally corrupt as far as Jay-Z, as far as someone who didn't hurt other people, but still being exposed. On the, and I know you're not really into sports and I'm not, I'm not as into sports as I used to be. Uh, not near, I'm 90%, not nowhere near as in, as in sports as I used to be, but I have, I still follow along with some stuff and the rumblings keep coming up back up about LeBron James and steroid use. And these are rumblings I heard a decade plus ago. And even that's starting to come out now where it's just like these people who have gotten pushed to the top. It's, it's like whatever the industry pushes to the front, there's like, it's, like, it's almost it's like they have a high level of corruption relative to it. It's almost like they put people up there that they know they got something on, you know? And yeah. It's, it's been in the sports media. What was making a lot is these rumblings have been around for a long time, but there are certain people who work and, you know, and the fact that the when they, anytime I see a story getting put out there and the mainstream sports media is not picking up and run, running with it, especially if it can make a black man look bad, yes. that sounds like some higher plays that Vol was involved and his bigger money involved in. But the story won't go away. And it's to me between that and then Jay Z, the rumblings, these are stories to watch for the for the rest of the year, you know, where they go, you know? Yeah, I mean, Chris Brown, someone just mentioned this. Thank you for bringing that up. Rihanna, I mean, look, and I like Beyonce, but she's got more Grammys than Stevie Wonder. I mean, really? Well, she's just as corrupt as Jay Z. They're, they're two of the I, same. She's I, I I okay good. She's, uh, she's she's no more innocent than he is when it comes. To I that. didn't I, I didn't say she's innocent, uh, but I like seeing her shake more than him. <laughs> well, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah with, so we well, I'll give her that she can shake, and uh, uh, I'm just but again for Sean King, coming back to him, um, and remember you said the seat you were talking about the seat of corruption that people had to have to be advanced. They advanced Sean King and Rachel Dolezal, another person uh, cosplaying uh, black, right? Uh, or should I say, uh, Joanna Coon. <laughs> I mean, this kind of stuff, uh, it's ridiculous. You know, I, um, as you know, you know, we were late on the call, I was talking to some people and, you know, I was talking to Sister Sean and she got a cousin on the phone and the cousin that she knew knew two of my cousins that died because the department of agriculture drove them crazy they both died from brain cancer from the stress that they were they died within six months of each other both with brain cancer and um the reason i bring it up is that we see real the real struggles and the real things that black people go through 
that culture and all can't be conveyed by folks faking being us. And I'm beginning to see phonies everywhere. I see Kamala Harris. I see uh, this uh, Afrocentric Gilligan Island looking Joy Reid. I mean, damn her, man, with that golden marmoset monkey wig she's got on. She looks like Peter Pan as a, dra a black drag queen, man. I mean, what's she, up she with looked, her? She looks, like, she looks like James Brown's the drummer, Clyde Stubblefield. Uh, actually, she looks like the guy who used to put the cape on James Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joy Reid looks like she sings background for Earth and Fire. Like, she, mm -hmm. she, she, she Phyllis Bailey, uh, Phyllis Bailey, or so I, I'm, I'm calling her. Well, well, Phyllis Bailey, you know, by the way, let's talk bad about Kamala Harris for a minute. Oh, yeah. Let me tell my it. joke. Yes. Uh, what does Kamala Harris have? It? What's the difference between Kamala Harris's legs and a picnic table? I don't know. Tell me. Uh, her legs are never crossed. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is, why does Kamala Harris like Legos? Why? Because they stick together. <laughs> now, you know, Kamala Harris had a big freaky party listening to Sexy Red with a bunch of stud looking women hey, at the was, neighborhood. What was that? What, what the it, it, it was it, Kamala Harris. Is, she's nasty. I mean, uh, you know what? I hate to be her OBGYN. I mean, <laughs> actually, her OBGYN needs to be the EPA. It's probably so bad down there. You know, have on hazmat and stuff to try to like get in there. Can you imagine? Put a spectrum in there and it it not come back out. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 pathetic. She's pathetic um it's it's it was despicable what happened they were listening i mean singing about eating a nigga's ass in the vice presidential mansion and i'm and, thinking and, and that right there that right there right that right there that right there it's like oh when she played that's the, and that right there for people who are saying okay what's the issue why are you mad that she's she's really black she looks like us the fact that like the, the black women I grew up around, especially of her age, I, mean, she, I ain't talking about these 30 year olds that was, that was raised by degenerates. Black women of her age would never, 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 especially black women who went to, 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 to colleges like they got degrees, they professional, no way in hell they gonna be playing no goddamn sexy red. They're not gonna be carrying no goddamn hot sauce and, and talking about, hey, Fife, women. The black women of her age, a real black woman of her age, classy to Anita Baker, and she, mm -hmm. a, a real black woman of her age, uh, is gonna be bumping some SWV. They're gonna be playing some Tony Braxton. She's gonna be playing some Rufus and Shaka Khan. That's right. what women of her age get down to. If she listening to rap, it's gonna be some Lauren Hill, some Outkast. You know, all this goddamn like her cosplaying and acting like she's black what that does is now she's over here having sexy red in the goddamn vice presidential palace represent black culture she don't have none of them goddamn uh I, why don't she get one of them goddamn dravidians over from where she come from that be cross-dressing and playing that sitar music that dun, 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 dun. Or, or did you see why can't that? Kamala Harris goddamn get a get a sitar playing or somebody to play a goddamn flute out they news with a snake charm like Kamala Harris. Nah, Kamala Harris. Well, what I'm saying to you, Kamala Harris, is this. What I'm what I'm saying to you, Kamala Harris, is this. You gotta stop acting like you black. All this acting like you black, all this playing black, we tired of this shit because you only black, and then when you you black and bringing in degenerates. You ain't why the fuck can't you bring in Tony Braxton? Why can't you bring in Jill Scott to the vice presidential palace? Why can't you bring in goddamn anybody? We have bring in goddamn Tevin Campbell. Shit, say you could bring in Tevin Campbell and be like, "Hey, gay community, we got the nigga from that saying, I'm ready here to just do that." They could bring in Johnny Gill, and, and yeah, but you bring in sexy red, and then you saying you black. Nah, I'm like I'm 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 just I'm I'm tired of this shit, man. I'm 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 tired of it. I'm sick of it too. Um I'm it's 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 sick. And that's the other thing. There's so many people faking 
people pretending and they're using these people to hurt us over and over and over and over and over again and uh it, it's 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 bad and and the same thing happens in politics they they're now looking for people they're running this ethiopian woman to run her as a black woman i'm not saying she's not black she's not black american running her in new york you got ilhan omar you got all these people who had the right to be who they are but they're riding on us and they have nothing for us once they get there to the summit of it we already have our own traitors that we need to deal with and that's why we've got to take a hard line with sean king and anybody else like that and it wasn't even about religion because um i know people that are very sincere and whatever it is that they believe genuinely mm -hmm. but my point is if you were never sincere and you were a christian leader okay and you were lying and grifting all the while you, to me, if there was no major transformation where you just came out and apologized, you had to get caught and people had to hound and make you do it, right? Then your heart hasn't really changed. And I use the term uh, nigger Muslim. And, and that, yes, be, because you might be a Muslim, but you're still a nigger. Uh -huh. you, you, you haven't changed you're still you still drink and get high and do all this stuff but you throw out this name or i'm uh, I'm, I'm rasul so everyone has to change it and and it's external no transformation of your heart and mind no it's not kids all over the place folks doing all kinds of of, of foolishness instead of being sincere i know people i have met muslims and i'm a, they are they are they're truly doing the very best that they can as Muslims. Truly. Whether I agree with it or not, they're living, they're following their, the five Pilsarat al Mustaqim. They are doing that it, their Islamic path, their prayers, all of it. And then there are people just like I know, we don't go to church that much. I don't, I believe in God. You know, I got invited to go to Palm Sunday service with my cousin, then to go to religious concert and i've been praying for the endurance to be around church bs for several hours because you know um you know when you go to it's very hard for me because you walk in and you know there's one of these old geriatric studs in there that kind of don't keep themselves up that want to be sociable with everybody got bad breath you know <laughs> uh -huh. You know, the Lord's blessed me. I feel like saying, the Lord will bless you, but never let you be a lesbian so long. But then, oh, what you say? Well, God wants you to be a thespian all along. Well, God bless you too, right? <laughs> right. I mean, it's my mind be wanting to tell people the truth. You know, <laughs> you can't, you can't, I can't go to church because I might be honest and it's God. You have to go in and, and put on your, your fake church face and start lying to everybody so you can get along because you know in reality a lot of churches are basically uh a 12-step uh, club for liars and hypocrites all the people that lie they can't fit in anywhere else go to church where they can bullshit and you know there's some good music and sometimes there's food and sometimes there's a lot of sex in there because the people repressed <laughs> you know you know be like hitting yourself with your cross just back 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 right <laughs> but at the end of the day, you're still people. So if you don't really know, um, uh, if you didn't know uh, certain people, um, if you didn't know certain people, you 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 just wouldn't know anything about them. You, you know, you wouldn't go to certain places because there's so much crap there. I'm not saying that there aren't substantive places. And it's the same thing with these people that are being put in, whether it's Candace Owens, there's so many people. We're being besieged. You can't even that get Candace black Owens. black actors. And I mean, all the actors have to be from everybody's. It's everybody but us. People from other, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. I mean, good example. There are people all here running around here calling themselves militant this or that. 
and they're not even from here. Not right, really. Right, 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 not right. real deep roots here. And I, I know there's somebody mad at me. There was one of these Negroes that was out doing a campaign on me. I don't come in here constantly trashing people from other countries. You and I have been talking about four years. When we talked, I sit up saying, I hate foreigners. I don't like this. I don't, I, I don't talk like that. We don't even we don't even have a conversation. But when this comes up, you have people that come to this country and pretend to be black Americans because it's a career. It's a hustle. We already have our own traders. And the only way to solve this is that anyone who's an enemy to us has to get addressed. And in particular, this is something that men have to take a role in. Um, I'm going to just say this. For the most part, um, a lot of our black women are failures. And they're not supposed to lead the people anyway. And that's the other thing of constantly putting uh, women in places where men ought to be and having men want to be in places that women are instead of us working as a team as black men and black women to get our community straight. And it's men that have to set parameters of who can be amongst us. You can't just go to certain countries and pull up to a woman that you like. No, no you can't. You can get yourself killed real fast. Mm -hmm. uh, in our community, a lot of things happen that people don't check. Sean King is an example of it. So is Rachel Dalazal. And these kinds of people, let us remember. <laughs> so is Eminem, niggas. Yeah. Well, I, I've never bought anything by Eminem. And I, I'm never going you have to. All these, you have all these idiot rappers. Unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of the original head class of rappers doing things that Ray Charles, uh, Louis Jordan, Duke Ellington would have never done with our music. These cats over here, you know, just throwing a white boy to the front because he's white. But I want to, uh, we get ready to close it out. I got, I got somewhere to be in, uh, in, about, in about 10 minutes. So... We talked about that. Dr. Short, you know, close it out with us. You know, we're talking about these fake black Americans and their and how they weigh on us and how they harm us. We talked about Sean King one day, the black, white, Christian, Muslim, and these people that, that this overall for the people in the back, for the people who don't understand why we have this kind of conversations. Why are we having a conversation about all of these fake black people and these black people who misrepresent us? What has been the long term? We we face severe consequences for this historically. Um, mm -hmm. I want you to give a context as to why this is so important. Why is Dr. Short bringing this up? Why is it so important that we know who is who? How has that hurt us in the past, and how can that affect us moving forward? I want you to close it out with that. I, I'm going to make it very simple. Uh, it's called tribalism or ethnocentrism, where people are very, very, very concerned only about their own group. When you get people who come from a very, very insular or isolated cultural ethnic group and they only like one another, they see everybody else as the enemy. There are people from Africa and other places that, that are right now, there are wars all over Africa where Africans are killing each other and you can't blame everything on white people. They've been fighting before white people existed. Don't like each other, don't wanna like each other. When they come to America, um, uh, the scam Africanist liars that we have in abundance. Uh, like, I don't know if you saw the girl, the real pretty Ethiopian woman that was complaining about black Americans coming to Ethiopia and lying about there being no hunger in Africa. Because again, this, a lot of black Americans are psychologically destroyed. And they need a fantasy, whether it's Wakanda or Africa not having gays or all. Some, somehow that's going <laughs> to the Vikings are black, the extraterrestrials are black. I mean, the mermaids are black. Everything, everything has to be something like them for them to have value, because in reality, their reference point of what is good is white. So they're constantly looking for something black that's comparable to what they look up to that is white to make them not feel like they're nothing. When you have that kind of deficit, that's how people can sell you nails, 
They can sell you expensive deodorant. They can rip you off economically because you're willing to give up your money and everything to be something else or to do something about how you don't like yourself. And so the black hair care industry, the nails, there are other people getting rich off of how much black people hate themselves. There are Chinese taking deadly chemicals and putting them in hair care products, all they have to do is put a halfway decent looking black one on the box. And nobody, no matter who loves black women, can't beg them. Don't sterilize yourself with these products. But look, it's a nice box. You don't work. So there are a lot of sterilized people, people with cancer. There are a lot of people drinking pro the, the, the menthol cigarettes that are more carcinogenic. They've all been targeted towards black people because they know we need, we don't want God and we don't want each other. We want other people who hate us to love us. And therefore we take all of our defenses down and people like Sean King, Rachel Dalazal, Barack Obama, Kamala Harris, Sheila Jackson Lee, and a host of other grifter, liar, uh, tethers or racists come amongst us and they decimate people the same way you have white teachers molesting black kids in schools all over America. And a lot of folks are just happy that they've got white teachers. It's, it's so we have a choice. Love the most high, love one another, have concern and compassion for the rest of humanity, but let it start within us first, take care of us. Or can a people be eliminated sure they can last comment one of my favorite teachers from howard university was a dr ayodele langley he's a pan-africanist historian from the gambia and one day dr langley called me into his office i said mr short i need to talk to you sit down and he says do you see what's going on here and he is at african studies department he says do you know that these people want to replace you? This is a African man who's a political asylee from the Gambia telling me that the Africans that he sees hate black Americans and want to replace us. And they, they didn't come here to work with us. Mm -hmm. They came to erase us. I He brought this up. I'm not thinking about this. Imagine this is an African talking to me. Do you know? And he says, you know what? Don't let them take your country from you. They'll surely do it. And I'll just give you a reference point. I have associates in Senegal. These guys are buying tickets to fly to Nicaragua to come across the border. And do you know, they understand that the economy is bad, but it's better than where they are. A lot of them understand if they come to America, they'll have higher status than black Americans will. That means they're going to be police and and they're brutal in Africa. What do you think they're going to do here? You're not in the same tribe that you know about. And if white people are paying them and have their back, we don't matter. In 1996, the United Nations Rapporteur, uh, Professor Dudu Diné, a Senegalese was run out of the United States by President Bill Clinton. He's Senegalese. Do you know what he said? He said one of the greatest threats to the advancement of black Americans were the black immigrants who were coming in, who were deliberately waging economic warfare against black Americans, all the while benefiting from the struggle of black Americans, getting access, but it wasn't reciprocal. Um, Pan-Africanism without reciprocity is a sucker's suicide. And that extends to all the other people. Either we're gonna learn to live together as foundational black Americans in the United States, or we're gonna die as stupid, atomized, self-hating niggas. That's some real talk, Dr. Short. Uh, it's all about codifying it and seeing the threat is real. One thing black people don't understand is <clears throat> just because you didn't start the fight, don't mean the fight ain't on. And don't and mean so, the fight and, isn't going to come to you. And so you must just understand that, you know, we got to respond not to the environment we want, but the environment that we have. 
Mm. And that's what we're talking about here. Uh, when we're talking about people say, well, there are coons all across the board, and that's true. But when we look at the percentages that are in office from Sheila Jackson Lee to, uh, to St. Pierre, to all these people, to that dude over there in Virginia, to all these people who aren't from here, they have mm. a, a, the high the percentage. Go back to statistics. When you look at the 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 the, the median, the the mode, what's the average? What's okay if we have ten Black Americans and ten non-Black Americans being Black Americans? Ten Black Americans screwing around that, that that are active. We might have three uh, super coons, three people who can be bought either way it goes. And two, uh, and, and, and another four that's all the way down. You know, when we look at them, we might have one that's all the way down, and eight super coons, and mm -hmm. one that could be bought. It's just the percentages are too out of balance. Like, and if I'm lying, show me the non-black American who's done anything on the level of a Dr. Claude Anderson or a Dick Gregory. Show me, show me. Give me 10 and and don't go back to Harry Belafonte. I'm talking about let's go to some people who existed and who did these things actively this century, you know, in the last 25 years. Yeah, we got Al Sharpton, but we also had Khalid Muhammad. You know what I mean? And so, and it's not to drive a further wedge because I don't want a further wedge, but us as black Americans, we just have to be cautious to our environment. We got to look and see who owns the shade room, who owns Lipstick Alley, who owns World Star Hip Hop, who owns all these publications that are always speaking negatively about us. Who are these people making movies and representing us to where it, it results in a, let's all come together. Black Americans, we've tried that. So our message is a little bit different than people who got here in the last 40 years. That's just what it is. And it's all about uh, drawing that distinction. It's all about pointing it out and making sure we know who is who. And, and there are plenty of non-black Americans who are on our team, but let your deeds decide where you stand, not your words. And for those whose deeds show us where they stand, and it's a lot in this chat room, we love you. We embrace you. But mm -hmm. those are the people that aren't telling us, hey, be quiet. You only want us to be quiet as if you, if you want us to be quiet about this, my question to you is, all right, what are you up to? Because if you're securing what you're doing, if you're securing what you're doing, you, 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 you will be securing what I'm doing. And we'd have that mutual respect. But I'm about to close. I want to say one last thing. I got to get out of here in about one minute. Yes. Uh, I want everybody that can to subscribe to yes. to to uh, the Angry Black Men's Book Club. Uh, that's one channel. Angry Black Men's Book Club. Or Dr. Randy Short. Uh, A B M one that stands for Dr. I'm, Randy I'm, Short. I'm gonna put it in. He said, Dr. Randy Short. Mm -hmm. A B M one. And where is that? It's on YouTube. That's YouTube. And and also, if they can I'll donate, here. Here, but also donate to you, Dewan. Dewan, Dewan has a very good documentary to everybody that. It's on my channels, which is, I'm beginning to pull a few thousand each time I do a show. Maybe not today because they mess with my, with these platforms, but Dewan B, he's on YouTube. He's wonderful. He's a, a musical genius. He needs a few thousand dollars and we're going to start fundraising. People make it rain on the bullshit platforms. It's always shocking to how how certain people not even saying anything i mean the super chats just constantly coming through and other folks can like i could do a nine hour do i gotta get out of here dr short yeah right. so i'll see you but uh dr randy short is uh the cash app for your folks on your end and we'll keep doing what we do i'll see you brother duan all right dr randy short all right cool so that was dr short we will be uh, coming. Be, we come back to you guys live tomorrow, Friday. We doing our Friday readings tomorrow, and I'm a. I might read into this whole. Uh, tell me what y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm even about thinking about reading tomorrow into the DJ Academics and Meek Mill. I'm, I think about reading their combination cards, or 
I was either that or I was gonna read Jay Z's ear and see and see when the hammer is gonna fall down on Jay Z. I think I'm good tomorrow. I think I'm gonna read Jay Z's cards for the year and see where he at. All right, and see because the whispers get louder. The whispers are getting louder. So we're gonna read the cards into that situation tomorrow. All right. Um, but thank you again for listening. <laughs> thank you again for listening. Y'all have a good one. My name is Dewan. I'm out.